Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. This video is for your RBI SEBI NABARD phase one current affairs. Okay, so this the questions that I'm going to take up in this video can become a probable question for you in your phase one of RBI SEBI NABARD along with your banking PO examinations. Okay. So let's begin this video, but the important information for you all is that you can download the PDF on the Telegram channel that we have and the link of that channel is in the description below. Also, if you like the content provided by us, then guys, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Let's begin with the first question of the day. Which of the following institutes is not a part of the textile ministry's pilot project for skilling of personnel engaged? In designing and commissioning of geotextiles. Okay, so we have IISC Bangalore, IIT Delhi, IIT Madras, IIT Roorkee, none of the above. So out of these options, the right answer is IIT Delhi. It is not a part of this project. Now, let's break this entire news into bits and uh, into bits so that it will be easier for you to understand the news and memorize it for a longer period of time. Okay. So, first of all, the thing that you need to memorize is that this scheme is launched by the Ministry of Textiles, which is very easy to remember because the name has geotextiles in it. Okay. Next, the purpose of this scheme is skill training. Okay, this is not basically a scheme, it is a project. Okay. So the third point that you need to know is that the group that is being catered to, that is being targeted here is the personnel's, personnel who are engaged in either designing or commissioning or both of geotextiles. So basically we are targeting the personnel engaged in the geotextiles. Okay. So what is exactly geotextile? Now let's have a look at that and then we will move into the details that you need to memorize from your exam point of view. So geotextile is basically a strong paper, uh, strong fabric that is used in construction of projects and the basic purpose of that fabric is to prevent soil erosion as well as it tight, tightly holds the loose soil. Okay, so the basic purpose is to prevent the soil erosion. As you can see here, okay. This is the protecting geotextile and this is, so this is preventing the contaminated soil. Sorry guys. This is preventing the contaminated soil for, from permeating into the deeper layer. Okay, so this mat is preventing that and this, this erosion control mat is preventing the soil erosion. So this is a geofabric. Now don't Pay attention to the entire diagram. Don't even try to memorize it. It is just for an example purpose. Okay. Now let's look into the scheme in detail, the project in detail. Okay. So I have told you this thing that it is a strong fabric used in construction for preventing soil erosion and stabilizes loose soil. That is the basic objective of geotextile. Now this project caters to the skill training of these personnel who are already engaged in designing these geotextiles and commissioning them and using those geotextiles in construction of infrastructure projects. Okay. Now, the project will be conducted by the IISC Bangalore, IIT Madras, IIT Rurki and they will provide the skill tra training to two batches and both the batches will have 75 to 100 candidates. So, these were the informations that are related to this news and are important for your exam. Moving on to the next question, what is the purpose of the recently launched GDAM initiative of Ministry of Power? So let me tell you, the full form of GDAM is Green Day Ahead Market. This is the full form. Now let's have a look at the options. To promote green hydrogen, to tackle shortage of coal reserves in India, Option C says to promote installation of solar PV panels at the rooftops to reduce the losses of the discoms and GENCOs in the power sector to facilitate trade of renewable energy on competitive price. Here, the right answer is option E. So this 
initiative or basically this platform has been launched by the ministry of power so that the sale and trade of the renewable energy can take place in a transparent manner as well as competitive price can be achieved in renewable energy sale that is the whole purpose of launching this initiative okay so the green day ahead market is a step towards reducing the imports of fossil fuel and increasing the use of green hydrogen so the focus here is green hydrogen but the overall trade of renewable energy can take place on this portal okay so here it is not that only you can trade in green hydrogen you can also trade in solar energy also on this platform the platform will enable fair market based competitive prices renewable energy generators so energy generators are called gencos and distributors are called discounts distributing companies okay so renewable energy generators can sell power on this platform on effective prices and distributors can also sell their surplus power on this platform that is the whole purpose behind launching this platform moving on to the next question so guys this is the bombshell that i have kept for you all let's read out the question first recently controller and auditor general of india and auditor general of maldives have signed an mou to mutually develop and strengthen their institutions professional capacity and improve methodologies in the field of audit of public finance from india the mou was signed by the cag of india girish chandra murmu who signed the mou from maldives side so that's the bombshell that was the surprise for you the person who signed the mou from the other side has been asked from me. so i hope that this question gives you a glimpse about how you should strategize your preparation of current affairs okay not only focus on the main highlighted words but also keep your eyes open to the other dimensions to the other minute facts from where questions can be framed so here the auditor uh, general of maldives is hussain niazi so ha ah, yes auditor general he is ki position ka naam hai so auditor general of maldives is hussain niazi who has signed this mou with controller auditor general of india now we have seen the purpose of their uh, mou the purpose is to build the capacity to uh, build the uh, capacity of the personnel as well as strengthen their cooperation so that they can develop new methods of auditing the public finance okay so developing new methods in the field of audit and audit that to that pertains to the public finance okay so that is the whole purpose of this mou now the signatories we have already discussed and both these parties will conduct training programs for the personnel of each other okay next is india and asean are going to celebrate their 30th year of diplomatic relations in 2022 to celebrate this the year 2022 will be observed as the india asean year of friendship which edition of the india asean summit has been organized recently so here the right answer is 18th edition i always say whenever we are uh, covering any kind of summit or any international conference related to un or a major international organization for example your ilo your wto any international organization if a conference is held by that organization if a meeting or summit is conducted by that organization or a summit is there you need to memorize the edition of that summit okay so here the india asian summit it's the 18th edition that was that was organized or basically it will be organized today itself virtually okay this is the 9th india asian summit to be attended by the prime minister narendra modi okay he has been invited by the sultan of brunei hasan hasnal bolkia okay so he has invited the prime minister to attend this meeting the 2022 will mark the 30 years of india asian relations 
16th east asia summit will be held on october 27 2021 so basically it's the past it has already been held now the 2021 chair of asian and the east asia summit is brunei now do remember that east asia summit is basically a forum which has 10 asian members along with some other countries including india china etc okay so the chair of asian automatically is the chair of the east asia summit as well so do remember last year it was vietnam this time it is brunei okay so the members that are part of the east asia summit are india china japan korea australia new zealand us and russia as per the status of coral reefs of the world 2020 report dash percent of the world's coral reef has been lost in the last 10 years due to the global warming so here the right answer is 14% and guys this was the highlight of this report this was the focus of this report therefore this fact is a question for you here okay now global Coral Reef Monitoring Network has released this report in association with United Nations Environment Programme. As per this report, 14% of the coral reefs we have already lost in the last 10 years, and coral reefs are very important because they sustain 25% of marine life. Therefore, coral reefs are the food for them. And if they are destroyed, then obviously we are destroying the marine animals. Marine ecosystem is being disturbed. Therefore. it's a very it has a very huge impact on the marine ecosystem eastern tropical pacific region has suffered the highest amount of loss 95% whereas east asia has suffered the minimum that is only 5% coral reefs cover only 0.2% of the sea floor they support at least 25% of the marine species therefore their destruction their degradation is a very big threat to the marine species and if the marine species are in threat then obviously the humans the people who survive on the coastal ecosystem will also have to suffer so that is why coral reefs are important for to be preserved in the future now the value of goods and services provided by the coral reefs is estimated at US dollar 2.7 trillion per year so this much is the contribution of coral reefs towards humans including US dollar 36 billion in coral reef tourism so log tourism ke liye bhi coral reef ko dekhne aate hain and that is also a major contribution of the coral reefs towards the world economy the report assesses the situation of coral reefs in 73 countries for a period of 40 years so that was the whole report report all about next question is who among the following has become the first black woman to win the 2021 peace prize of the german book trade so here let's see is the right answer so she is a zambib she belongs to zambia so she is a zambian writer and she has won this 2021 peace prize of the german book trade and became the first black woman to win this prize now this year only she won the pen printer prize also so it is not a very remote news in june only she won this award therefore there are high chances that you can expect a question from her in your upcoming exam if the exam is announced at the end of this year or towards the beginning of the next year okay so the award the pen printer award was established in 2009 after the herald printer and all of these are the details of the writer as well as the award okay so let's have a brief look at the details so this pen printer award is an annual award which is given to a writer who shows a fierce intellectual determination to define the real truth of our societies no need to memorize this at all bilkul yaad karne ki zarurat nahi hai it is just for your information purpose she is a novelist playwright filmmaker and activist activist these points are important okay so if you can memorize then you can know, memorize it that she is a novelist a playwright filmmaker and activist 
she was also shortlisted for booker prize in 2020 for her book the mournable body you can also skip this fact again it was for your information purpose so guys here this video ends if you have liked the content then do not forget to share, share this video and subscribe our channel thank you so much for watching the video